Alright, this is Silent Hill 2 for the PC. I gave in and bought it on Steam despite its ridiculous price. 93 and change, basically $94 Canadian. More expensive on Steam than it is to go buy a physical copy for the PS5. It's $90 Canadian here for the PS5 version. $94 for the Steam version kind of ridiculous and I didn't want to buy it but you know it is the Halloween season and there's no better game for me to play right now than this so here it is running on my Ryzen 7 5800X and my AMD Radeon RX 6750XT 12 gigabyte GPU I am using uh, some optimized settings from Benchmark King that I found a video for on YouTube. I'll have a link to that video in the description. Um, but yeah, basically, um, if we go into our settings here, uh, we are running at 1440p, but not native. We have um, uh, XESS on. This game supports uh, XESS and FSR3 and DLSS and FSR1 for some reason so you got a lot of options here but basically if you've got an Nvidia card obviously use DLSS that's gonna give you the best image quality but if you're on an AMD card like me you would think you would use FSR3 but from what I saw XESS which is like Intel's upscaling uh, system uh, you get slightly better image quality and basically the same performance I do have that on balance so yeah our native resolution is not going to be great uh, I've got ray tracing turned off one interesting thing about this game is using the Unreal Engine 5 and it has the Lumen software reflections for ray tracing so even when this is turned off you do get some hardware reflections uh, in the water for example and actually I'll show you in the car uh, but when you turn it on that uses hardware accelerated lumen ray traced reflections uh, and they do look a little bit better and some of the lightings in indoor areas look slightly different but honestly not that much better uh, it's mainly reflections in water and stuff that's gonna look a little bit better if you have this turned on but obviously it's a good 25 percent performance drop if you turn this on uh, so, yeah, use that at your own discretion. Uh, a lot of this stuff is stock. Go into advanced. If you set this to custom, then you can unlock advanced quality settings. And uh, in here we've got shadow quality on low. This is one thing that you've got to turn down if you don't have a super high-end GPU. Uh, the game looks notably better on medium, but again... There's a pretty fair, I don't know off the top of my head, 20% performance loss maybe going to medium. Uh, medium to high, visually, not a huge difference. So realistically, shadow quality, low if you're on a low to mid-range GPU, and maybe try medium if you're on a higher end GPU. Texture quality in this game doesn't seem to make much of a difference. This will automatically change based on your hardware and your VRAM as you're playing the game. So it's going to automatically try to load in the best textures while it can. So changing this doesn't make a huge difference. Uh, shader quality though, you definitely want this on medium. If you have this on low, reflections on glass look terrible. The reflections on the glass on cars, the glass basically just looks black. If you have this on low, where you get good looking reflections on the glass for medium. So it may be a little bit of a hit in performance, but it's such a jump in visuals. Uh, effects quality, you want on high, not a big performance difference. Not really a big visual difference or a big performance difference changing this. Uh, and same with lens flares. And then SSAO by default was on, but this is a big one. The image quality difference is crazy. Like this looks so much better when you have it on and it's only like a 3% performance hit to have it on so there's absolutely no way you would want to turn this off uh, SSR screen space reflections we want on uh, SSS quality 
I think we want this on high. Again, it's one of those things where there's not a huge performance difference. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that's that's basically it. Um, as you can see, it looks pretty good. And uh, when we come up to this car here, we can actually see a little bit, well, that's kind of hard to see. It was, there we go. You can kind of see a bit of our reflection in the glass, but it's a very, very basic, uh, you know, low poly model. You can just kind of make out that there's like my head and my body reflecting in the glass there. Uh, maybe with the RT on, that looks a little bit better. Um, the reflections in the water, uh, you, again, um, it's mostly going to be uh, screen screen space reflections. But as we pan the camera down, I mean, you can still see the trees and the reflections. Very very basic. Again, very low poly models. Um, but you know, again, it it still looks okay and I mean we shouldn't be staring at the quality of things in the reflections of water and with the SSR again things like the van there look pretty good and uh, the car you can see the car in the building there and that looks pretty good and realistically most of the time you're gonna have the camera facing forward uh, as far as performance goes I'll put it up when I have the game when I'm recording the game uh, full screen uh, like if I use the AMD Adrenaline, uh, you know, thing built in recording, screen recording, uh, it doesn't record the overlay. So this is recorded with my phone. Uh, if it's a little hard to see the FPS, I'll zoom in on the FPS there. But basically we're running at like at least 80 frames per second. Now granted, this is just the opening area of the game. There's not a lot going on. So it's possible that's going to drop as we get into different parts of the game. So... I think I'm just going to leave it here. You know, I could try maybe turning XESS up one setting to, like, uh, quality. Or I could try, you know, maybe turning the shadows from low to medium. But, I don't know. This looks pretty good. I'm not going to get, like, super picky about it. This looks pretty good, and it's running... Uh, honestly, it's running fine, so... Uh, yeah, just a little bit further into the game, not a lot, but at least, you know, we're into the Silent Hill town here, and, yeah, as you can see, we're still running in the, like, 90 frames per second range, and, uh, our CPU usage is pretty low, I think even once we start getting into combat, I don't think it's gonna drop much further, and it could be wrong, but, yeah, I just wanted to show that a little bit further into the game, it's still running, uh, really well, so, yeah, I think we're in good shape here. And look, this game does suffer from uh, traversal stutter, which is when the game is loading the next area up as you're walking through it. This is common with a lot of modern games. It's particularly common with Unreal Engine 5, UE5 games, which this is, of course, a UE5 game. And that, to me, is what it is. Um, you know, Resident Evil... Uh, for remake that had traversal stutters too and that that's their own re engine so it's not just an unreal uh, engine problem it seems to be a problem with a lot of modern games uh, it's some people say it's worse on the PC than it is on the PS5 uh, version of this game that's not necessarily true the thing is the PS5 version is going to be locked at uh, 30 or 60 frames per second um, and the PC, you're probably, well, potentially running it at a much higher frame rate. The stutters will be much more noticeable the higher your frame rate is. So if you're running the game at like 120, 140 frames per second, when it does stutter, it's going to be a lot more noticeable compared to if you were just trying, you know, running the game at like a locked 60 frames per second. So traversal stutter is a thing. Uh, for me, it's honestly, it's not the end of the world. I understand it happens when you hit certain areas and the rest of the game ahead is sort of loading up. It'd be nice if they could solve this problem, but it's not a deal breaker for me personally. So yeah, I, I didn't want to leave off on like a negative note, 
The traversal stutter is what it is. It's not a deal breaker for me. Otherwise, I think this game Hello. so far looks and Anything runs great. Here? Could it be a little better? Maybe, sure. Are these just modern problems? Maybe, yeah, sure. But again, I don't want to leave it off on a negative note. For me, they're not a deal breaker. The game looks great, honestly. <laughs> so, I don't know, what do you guys think? What's your opinion on that? I, I still think the game looks great. A lot of modern games have traversal stutter. It's not the end of the world. Um, so I'm not going to make a big deal. I'm not going to make a huge deal out of it. But I did want to mention it. It's, I, I have to mention it because, yeah, I'd get called out if I didn't mention it. It, it is a, a fact. Uh, in you know, It's in a lot of modern games. It's in a lot of UE5 games. And it's certainly here. And again, it might be a little bit more noticeable on PC when you're not playing at like a fixed 30 or 60 frames per second. Uh, like you are on the PS5, if you have a higher end PC and the game's running at an even higher frame rate, then it becomes more noticeable, which kind of sucks. But again, not a deal breaker. So there you go. I guess that's it. See you guys later.